So welcome everybody to this latest video on 160 Maths and in this video we'll be doing a exam paper walkthrough of the AQA GCSE Maths June 2018 Foundation Paper 1 which is a non-calculated paper. Now there will be a link to the paper in the description below and I'll include the grade boundaries to this individual, individual paper so you can see what grades you've got once you've marked your paper. So let's get started on this Foundation non-calculated paper. So looking at question one, it says work out a half times five. Well, that's just simply going to be 0 0.5 times five. So it's like 550p, which is £2.50. And then we just need to find which fraction is this equivalent to. Well, another way of saying 2.5 is two and a half. Then question two says circle the number that is five less than minus two. So you're doing minus two take away five, which is minus seven. And then with question three, it says simplify three times a times three times a. Well, three times three is nine and a times a is a squared. So we're going to circle nine a squared. So moving on to question th four, it says which shape is similar to shape X? And we're just looking for a perfect enlargement of the shape X. And that is going to be C. Then moving on to question five, it says work out 20% of 14,000. Well, 10% is 1,400. So 20% is going to be that doubled, which is going to give me an answer of 2,800. Then write 0 0.85 as a fraction in its simplest form. So that's going to be 85 over one. And I've got two numbers after the decimal point. So it's going to be over 100 and then we just divide both numbers by 5 and we get 17 over 20 and that there is our final answer and then with question 6b it says convert 5 8 into a decimal so if I set up my bus stop 8 goes outside 5 goes inside I know it's going to be a decimal number so here we've got 8 into 5 goes 0 and then carry the 5 8 into 50 go 6 remainder 2, 8's into 20 go 2, remainder 4, and 8's going to 40 five times. So the answer then is 0 0.625. Then moving on to question 7, it says that a rectangular carpet measures 8 metres by 6 metres. Part of the carpet is covered by a square rug of length of 2 metres. And it says that show 1 twelfth of the carpet is covered by the rug. So what we want here is where these fractions come from. It is the area of the rug over the area of the carpet. So what we need to do is work out those two individual areas. So the area of the carpet, which is the big rectangle, is going to be 8 times 6, which is 48. And the area of the rug, which is a square, is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. Then looking at this fraction, it's going to be 4 over 48, which simplifies to be 1 12th. So moving on to question 8, it says that Sam, Carl and Eric share 40 sweets. Eric gets the largest share. What is the smallest possible amount of sweets that Eric could get? Well, if I do 40 divided by 3, that gives me an answer of 13.3 recurring. So therefore, the smallest amount of sweets that Eric could possibly get is going to be 14. We're moving on to question 9. Uh, it says the time in Rio is 3 hours behind London and the time in New York is 5 hours behind London. What is the time in New York when it is 1 a.m. in Rio? So for this, we've got 1 a.m. in Rio is going to equal 4 a.m. in London. And then 4 a.m. in London is therefore going to equal 11 p.m. in the Big Apple. So therefore, the answer then is going to be 11 p.m. Or you can write as a 24 hour clock, which is going to be 200, uh, two, uh, 2300. Very American. So moving on to question 10, it says here is a list of numbers. Work out the median. So what I need to do here is account how many numbers I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to do, I'm not going to play hangman, but I'm just going to do 10 dashes. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm just going to order those numbers. 
so and it's really important that whenever you're working at the meeting that you do show that you're ordering don't just simply go off the list and try and work out what they are even if you know whereabouts the median is going to be always make sure that you are writing the ordered list now the median is going to be between my fifth and the sixth number and my fifth and sixth number are four and five so four plus five which is nine divide that by two gives me 4.5 the next question then says work out the mean so all i need to do then is add up all the numbers so if i add them all up the total it gives me is 41 and there are 10 numbers so the mean is going to be 41 divided by 10 which is moving the decimal point in one place so it gives me an answer of 4.1 moving on to question 11 it says that 300 passengers uh, go on a coach trip each coach takes 50 passengers each passenger pays 25 pounds the table shows the cost of the coach for the coach company and it says each coach travels 200 miles work out the total profit the company uh, makes from this trip so first of all let's work out the cost price of this trip so the cost price of this trip is going to be 90 pounds times or should i say plus uh, if the rubber is working which it is now so that's the cost of the driver plus and then we've got to pay the fuel so it's going to be 0 0.7 times 200 because we're traveling 200 miles and that comes up to a total of 140 so 90 plus 140 and that gives me an answer of 230. Now, I've then got to times that by six because I've got six coaches and that comes up to a total of 1380. Then if I work out the income that the bus company is getting well it's going to be uh, 50 times and there are how many people traveling on this trip there are 300 passengers so i'm going to do and each of them are paying 25 pounds so it's going to be 300 times 25 which is going to give me an answer of 7500 and then for the profit all that i need to do is take away those two numbers so the profit is therefore going to be 7500 minus 1380 and if I do that on the side, I can then work it out. So here I'm going to borrow from the five, get to a four. So that's going to be zero, two, one, six. So the profit is going to be 6,120. Then moving on to question 12a, it says work out 16.4, take away 3.92 plus one point uh, 7.8 so for this i've got to do 16.4 minus 3.92 so if i work that out first then what i get is 12.48 and then from that 12.48 if i then add 7.8 zero i get 20.28 giving me a final answer of just that and moving on to B, it says work out what 2843.61 uh, divided by 7 is going to be. So if I set up my bus stop, so 2843.61, decimal point there, and I get 0, carry the 2, and I get 4, carry the 0, carry the 4, get 6, carry the 1, then carry 2. And then three. So the final answer then is going to be 406.23. Then moving on to question 13, it says in a fair game, two fair spinners are spun. If the numbers on the arrow are different, the score is the higher number. If the numbers on the arrows land on the are the same, the score is zero. So what we need to do is complete this table. So looking for which number is higher, and if they're the same, it's a zero. So that's going to be two, three, and five, zero three and five we've then got four 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 and five and on the bottom row we've got six 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 the next question then says write down the probability that the score is an odd number so which of these are odd so for this we've got one two 
three, four, five. Don't count zero as an odd number. So it's going to be five out of a total of 16. And that can't be simplified. So we leave it as it is. The next question then says the same game is played using spinners C and D. The numbers on C are shown. The table shows some of the possible scores and the question is asking us to write down the missing numbers of D. So here between one, four wins, that means that this number here must be four. If the score is zero, then that means it must be the same. So we've got seven and we've got zero. So that must be a seven. And here we've got seven again. And the answer is eight. So that means that this number here must be eight here is on the spinner two fours and a seven and an eight now if you've put your numbers of those in a different order to mine that's absolutely fine should get full marks as long as you've got two fours one seven and one eight moving on to question 14 it says that two people working at the same rate will take six hours to paint a room assuming that they all work at this rate how long will it take three people to paint the room so here, basically, we want to work out the total number of hours to do the job. So total number of hours needed. And that's going to be 2 times 6. So it's going to be 12 hours. So this whole job is a 12 hour job. Now, if there's three people working, it's going to be 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So with three people working at the same rate, it's going to be a four hour job. It says, in fact, the third person works at a faster rate. How does this affect the uh, time to paint the room? Well, it's going to be basically painted quicker. So the room will be painted quicker. Something of that ilk will be absolutely fine. So it takes less time to paint the room. Something along those will be fine. Moving on to question 15, it says 3a plus b equals 7 and 6x plus 8y equals 40. Show that 9a plus 3b has a greater value than 3x plus 4y. So to get from this to this, what I need to do is to multiply by 3. So 9a plus 3b equals 3 times 3a plus b. Now we know that 3a plus b equals 7. So that's going to equal 3 times 7, which is 21. Now, to get from this to this, I need to divide by 2. So therefore, if 6x plus 8y equals, uh, let's say, well, let's do it the other way around. So here I've got uh, 3x plus 4y equals 6x plus 8y divided by 2. So that's then going to be 40 divided by 2, which is 20. So as you can see, 21 is greater than 20. Moving on to question 16, it says that circle the point that lies on the line of x minus 3 equals 0. So I'm looking for which value of x will make y equal to 0. And that's going to be our first one. Question 17 says A is a negative odd number. Circle the words that describe A squared. So if you've got a negative, a negative odd number, when you square it and multiply it by another odd number, then it's basically going to be positive because you, when you square it a negative number, it's always negative times negative is positive. And when you square a negative number, it will always give you a negative answer. Moving on to question 18, it says circle the ratio, which is the same as the scale as one centimeter equals one kilometer. Now for this, what you're wanting to know is how many centimeters there are in one kilometer. So I don't know what I'm doing there. So one kilometer equals a thousand meters. And if I times that by 100, I get one, two, three, one, two centimeters. So I'm looking for one to a hundred thousand, which is our fourth option. Moving on to question 19, it says circle the percentage that is the closest to the value of one third. Now, one third is 0.3333 recurring. So I'm looking for which percentage is closest to that. Well, it's going to be 33.3%. Uh, for question 20, it says work out the square root of 121 minus 13 times 5 times 2 squared. So looking at bid mass, which is what this question refers to, well, square root of 121 is 11. 13 times, 13 take away 5 times 2. Well, I've got to do the times first. So that's going to be minus 13 minus 10 squared. 
Then if I sort out the brackets, I've got 13 take away 10, which is 3. So then it's going to be 11 minus 3 squared, which is 11 minus 9. So the answer then is 2. Moving on to question 21a, it says reflect the triangle in the line of x equals 2. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are plotting the line of x equals 2. Now it doesn't need to be dashed but it certainly does need to be in the correct place. Now, if it is in the correct place, you should find that when you reflect that shape, it should, and preferably with a ruler, it should be right there. Then moving on to question 21b, it says rotate the kite 90 degrees anti-clockwise from the origin. Now, if you're using tracing paper, you should find that the coordinates you should have should be here now again should be using a ruler but basically the shape should look and should go pretty much there question 22 says anna plays a computer game each game is a win or a loss she wins three quarters of her first 24 games and then she wins the next 12 games but all 36 games work out the ratio of wins to losses give your answer in its simplest form so in terms of looking at what she wins well she wins three quarters so three quarters of 24 so 24 divided by 4 is 6 times 8 is 18 and then we add 12 so she wins a total of 30 games now she's played 36 in total so that means the wins to losses is going to be 30 wins and she loses six and then if we just simplify that ratio it then becomes five to one Then moving on to question 23, it says that a solid shape is made from centimetre cubes. Here is a plant side elevation and front elevation of the shape. Centimetre cubes are added to make this cuboid. And this question says how many cubes are added. So again, all you've got to do here is there's several ways in which you can do it. But I personally will try and visualise and maybe sketch the isometric drawing of using the plane uh, side and front elevation. But you should have an answer of 29 cubes now if you wrote down 27 28 30 or 31 then you will get two marks and if you wrote down 25 26 32 or 33 then you would get one of the three marks but the full mark answer is going to be 29 now moving on to question 24, it says divide 400 in the ratio of 4 to 11. So the first one to do is add the numbers in the ratio, which gives us 15. So I've got 405 divided by 15. So a bit of long division, but you should have the answer of 27. And if I do 4 times 27, and then 11 times 27, and again, whichever whichever way you do your multiply, but you should have 108 and 297. And those two answers there are what I should write down. The next question then says that the height of Zach is 1.86 meters. The height of Fred is 1.6 meters. Write the height of Zach as a fraction of the height of Fred. So for this, it's going to be 1.86 divided by 1.6. Now, if you want to add the zero, that's absolutely fine. So now what we want to do is simplify this fraction so if I convert it into centimeters just so the number losing the decimal it gives me 186 over 160 and then if I divide it by 2 I'm get 93 over 80 that doesn't simplify so I'll give an answer of 93 over 80 or if you want to write as a mixed number it's going to be 1 and 13 over 80 so I'd say any of those two answers would be good enough to get the three marks then moving on to question 26, it says that A is at 0, 2, B is at 6, 5, uh, points on a straight line of A, B, C, D. A to B to B to C, C to D are the same. So it says work out the coordinates of D. Now what we need to do here is basically compare the X ordinates. So the difference from this point to this point is 6. So that means that this point here is going to be 12 and this point here is going to be 18. So that's my X ordinate. 
And looking at the y ordinates, if this here is 2 and this here is 5, that means the numbers are going up by 3. So that means C is going to be at 8 and D is going to be at 11. So from this, I could then work out the coordinates of D, which is going to be 18, 11. Then moving on to question 27, it says that a coin is thrown 50 times, it lands on a head 31 times, write down the relative frequency it lands on a head, well it's going to be 31 over 50, which doesn't simplify, so that there is the final answer. It then says that Raj says that the coin is biased towards heads, use the data to give a reason as to why he may be correct. And the reason why it might not be, may be correct is because it's not a half or 0 0.5 and you could say that 35 is more than half and if it was a fair die you would expect it to be roughly around 50. Something along those lines should be able to get you the one mark. Question 28 is looking at the equations with inequality so again first thing you want to do here is expand the bracket so I get 5x plus 15 is less than 60 Take the 15 over to the other side by taking away 15, so end up with 5x is less than 45, and then take the 5 over by dividing by 5, so end up with x is less than 9. Then moving on to question 29, it says the range of a set of numbers is 15 and a quarter, the smallest number is minus 2 and 7 eighths, and it says write down the largest number. So what I'm actually needing to do is minus 2 and 7 eighths plus 15 and a quarter. So what you want to do here is convert them into improper fractions, so multiply the big number by the bottom, add it to the top, so I get 23 over 8 plus 61 over 4. Then think about a common denominator. So I could have a common denominator of 8. So if I times this second fraction by 2, I get 122 over 8. And then all I've then got to do is do minus 23 plus 122, which gives me 99 over 8. And there is my final answer. Now if I wanted to, I could give it as a mixed number. Leave it as it is. For question 30, it says y is inversely proportional to x, and it says complete the table. Now, I'm going to use the formula for this, even though it's not really essential, because I've got two numbers to fill in, and I've got to uh, work that out. So y is di inversely proportional to x. I can then work out what x, uh, k is by substituting the numbers of x is 6 and y is 4. So I've got 6 over no I haven't I've got k over 6 equals 4 so k equals 24 so the formula then is y equals 24 over x so when x is 12 y is going to equal 2 and when y is 8 what divided by 24 gives you uh, from 24 gives you 8 that's going to be 3 so moving on to question 31, it says the large rectangle is made by joining three identical small rectangles as shown. The perimeter of one small rectangle is 15 centimetres. Work out the perimeter of the large rectangle. Now for this, I'm going to use a little bit of algebra, although it's not essential. But if we just call the small end of one of the smaller rectangles x, now we know that two of these, so that's x and that's going to be 2x. So that means that this length here is also going to be 2x. So then that's going to be 2x, that's going to be 2x, that's going to be x, that's going to be x, and that's going to be x. Now what I now need to do is, now it says in the question that the perimeter of one small rectangle is 15 centimetres. So this here, that I've, this perimeter, is going to add up to 15. So here we've got 2x plus x plus 2x plus x equals 15. So looking at how many x I've got, well I've got 16, 6x equals 15, so x equals 15 divided by 6, so x equals, dividing both numbers by 3, I get 5 over 2, so x equals 2.5 centimetres. Now the perimeter of the large rectangle, if I work that out, is going to be 3x plus 2x plus 3x plus 2x and joining all of those up I end up with 10x 
Now, if x equals 2.5, then p equals 2.5 times 10, which is 25 centimeters. And there is my final answer. And then moving on to our last question, it says put these numbers in order from smallest to largest. So all you want to do here is convert them into ordinary form first. So this number here is going to be 0 0.0008. This number here is going to be 0 0.04. This number here is going to be 0 0.0006. And this number, which has already been converted, is 0 0.07. So the smallest number is going to be our third number. So that's going to be 6 times 10 to the power of minus 4. The next smallest is 8 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Then out these two numbers, the smallest number is 4 times 10 to the minus 2. And the largest number is 0 0.07. And there is my final answer and the end of this paper.